Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. A man I will call Bob is one whom I admired. He was a leader in the community and his voice was respected wherever he went. Because both of us represented sizable institutions in the town, he was on the call committee that brought me to the church I was serving at the time, we found ourselves in many of the same places in that small town frequently, at town celebrations, fundraisers, sports events, school activities. He was a generous man and had a heart for the community. A few years after I had left that community, the bank examiners found that Bob had embezzled more than $50,000 from the bank. He served time in federal prison for his crime. I was crushed that this man whom I had put on a pedestal could have betrayed his community and his family in that way. It was a stark reminder to me that we need to be careful about putting anyone on a pedestal because all humans have clay feet. In our long Old Testament reading for today, we lift up the biggest hero of the Old Testament. To this very day, if you ask a person of the Jewish faith who the greatest king of Israel was, there would be only one name and there would be one name only. It would be King David. Any president or governor in our day would love to have the name recognition and the public approval of King David. Nobody greater before, no one greater since. We Christians stand in that line. We, in our faith ancestors, waited for that one who would come in the line of David, one who would occupy the throne of David. Finally, that one came. His name was Jesus, the son of David, we called him. But wait, have we not forgotten something? Have we not forgotten an episode that any human being would want expunged from the record? Have we forgotten that in one part of his life, King David violated almost every one of the Ten Commandments with his coveting, his lusting after his neighbor's wife, his adultery, his stealing, his killing of an innocent man? Seriously. This guy couldn't get elected dog catcher today in a town overrun by stray mongrels. There is not one politician who would want David's support or his fiduciary gifts. There, there is not one soldier who would stand up for David in battle after David had killed one of their own in battle. Things haven't changed much have they? We wonder about King David, and yet we wonder about ourselves. I mean, if I, if I told you some salacious story about a man who spied a beautiful woman, schemed to get her into his bed, and when he found out she was with child, he plotted to have her husband killed. I mean, wouldn't you be thinking 2019? Dateline NBC would be all over this. And at the end of the hour or two of Dateline, we would see King David in his orange jumpsuit, wondering how it had all gone so wrong. Could this be the, the same guy who was courageous in battle, killing the giant Goliath with a slingshot when he was only a boy? Could this be the same brilliant military leader, the gifted musician who gave us so many psalms that we yet use today to praise God? Could this be the guy who wrote, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yep, same guy. And in this Me Too era, we wonder how it is that 
David could have survived his egregious sins. But we also do not know the mind of God. We do not know God's full intent or purpose in allowing this terribly flawed man to remain as leader of his people, the king of Israel. We do know from the written record of David's many successes how he expanded the land of Israel, expanded inf the influence of Israel over all the known nations of the day. We know that he was a brilliant military commander. He was a wise leader, and he really did love the Lord. But he also knew of his great flaws. Our modern-day Bibles tell us that Psalm 51 was written by David after Nathan confronted him with his sin against Bathsheba, his sin against Uriah, his sin against God himself. We have used most of that psalm in our confession and forgiveness of this day. In that psalm, David knows that he is a sinner in need of mercy. He says that his transgressions are always before him, have gripped his spirit. He knows that, that God is justified in passing judgment on him. He knows that laying an animal offering on the altar is not enough. That is not what God wants. God wants a broken and contrite spirit. God wants amendment of life. In spite of his fame and his power, David knew deeply of his great sin. He knew that he stood under the judgment of God. It was good fortune for him. He was under the judgment of a forgiving God. Things haven't changed much, have they? Fast forward 3,000 years, we are still terribly flawed people in need of a forgiving God. The good news for us is that we also have a forgiving God like David had a forgiving God. The greater news for us is that there was one who was sent expressly to be the atonement for our sins. While David was pleading for mercy, we need not plead for we know that Jesus came that we might have mercy and forgiveness. Now, that does not give us license to sin whenever and wherever we want. God expects us yet to live honorable lives in right relationship with God and in right relationship with others. We are to uh, love God and love our neighbor as ourselves. We are not to fall into lust and adultery and stealing and killing. That said, every one of us is going to fail to some degree or other. And when that person who fails has been set up on a pedestal, could be a business or religious leader, an admired community official, when they, when they fail, our hearts sink even as our hearts sink when we think of David's great sins. So many lives and careers have been torpedoed in these last years because of sins not unlike that of King David. Just in this last week, an NBC superstar's name surfaced again because of his sordid behavior. But before we look at the speck in our neighbor's eye, Matthew tells us we need to deal with the logs in our own eyes. We will fail. Perhaps we won't fall quite as far as David into breaking nearly all of the commandments at one time, but we will fail. And we need to be certain that we are dealing with the logs that prevent us from having a pure spirit 
and pure vision. The good news is this. God forgave David. God sent Jesus. God gives us assurance of forgiveness in this one named Jesus. We may have clay feet, but we have hearts that are restored in Christ. Amen. Hymn 801, please rise and sing.